Welcome back to the David Glenn Show. Our next guest became the youngest heavyweight champion at only 20 years old. He is still regarded as one of the greatest heavyweight boxers of all time. And guess what? He is here in the great state of North Carolina. You can check it out tomorrow night in Durham, NC, at the Durham Performing Arts Center, part of a 10-week, 36-city tour. The event is called Mike Tyson, Undisputed Truth. That is not the original title. We'll ask him about that a little bit later. Written by his wife, Kiki, directed by the legendary Spike Lee. Mike Tyson is 46 years old now, and he joins us on the David Glenn Show. Okay, Mike, the entire state of North Carolina is excited about your performance tomorrow night at the Durham Performing Arts Center. Let's start here. What's more difficult, beating up another man in the ring while wearing boxing gloves or entertaining thousands of people while on stage with a microphone? Well, it's easier to beat somebody up, of course. <laughs> this is very hard. In certain areas, this is harder than boxing. And then in certain areas of boxing, boxing is harder than this. Well, I know, given the good reviews your show has received over the past couple of months, that basically... Nothing is off limits. You get into prison and divorce and even the tragic death of your young daughter. It seems like all of these topics made it into your show. Why? Because everyone knew about them. And the, um, everything I'm talking about is what everybody's conscious about. So there's no way I could say a story that they're not sure about and say, oh, this is one of my stories. Everything I'm saying is documented. And so everybody would, you know, everybody knows what I'm talking about. Everybody's experienced with the era and they're back. And I'm, I'm taking them back into that environment and the atmosphere where it was when we were younger. Mike Tyson joining us on the David Glenn Show. Does it bother you at all that so far the reviews are saying that some of the most painful, personal, destructive stories that you're sharing are actually making your audience laugh the most? Is that okay in your eyes, or does it hurt a little bit? Well, at, at first it was kind of it was kind of weird and creepy. But I had to get a grip on myself and not take myself too serious. Because that's always, that's how I got in trouble all my life. So I took myself too damn serious. I felt some big killer and said, everybody should talk to me with respect and all that crap. So, um, I realized, um, if the crowd is laughing and they're happy, that's a good crowd. Mike Tyson. I look at it now. Mike Tyson joining us. Go to the website, dpacnc.com for ticket information. He's here in North Carolina at the Durham Performing Arts Center tomorrow night, 8 o'clock, part of a 10-week, 36-city tour. Uh, folks know, Mike, that you made hundreds of millions of dollars, literally, in your boxing career, and yet you ended up declaring bankruptcy about a decade ago. How do you explain something like that to the average guy on the street who will never understand that kind of money? You know, you're a young kid. Um, you got a lot of glory in your eyes. You spend a lot of money. Do a lot of money, people steal that close to you, betray you. You just go through the ringer, you know, and um, sometimes you're old too fast and smart too late, but I like to believe that that didn't happen to me and that um, I'm just cleaning up a lot of loose ends and things are going to be better in life. You're, su you're surrounded by a lot of talent with this production, including your wife Kiki and, of course, directed by Spike Lee. Give us a sense. I know you, your original idea for a show title was Boxing, Bitches, and Lawsuits. Tell us how your wife talked you out of that yeah, one. Yeah, well, she, you know, you know, she explained to me it's all about change. Now we don't talk like that no more. With the bitches and hoes, you know, this is the new guy. You know, you gotta be conscious because you know, how would you feel if somebody say that bitch, Mike Tyson's wife, that bitch, and this and that, and blah, day. And so I had to put my whole, um, to my whole barometer, pretty much. You know, day. Yep. How is it on show night? Is your wife in the audience and kind of offering you feedback from show to show? No, she's um she's behind stage, um, making sure I keep things in perspective and I don't stay on one subject too long. Because every now and then, this is not all the time, but every now and then I might get personal about an issue. I might start talking about it, and my voice get raised a little louder, and my voice crack, and I might tear, and I have to catch myself. So I really stay on stage with my wife and try to stay on course. And be very careful with my ad lips. My ad lips are very good, but they're very dangerous too because I don't want to get caught up with my emotions and say something that I'm going to hear somebody write about in the paper the next day. I'm not going to be um, favorable. Mike Tyson, Undisputed Truth is the name of the show. It was first done in Las Vegas, then on Broadway, now on the road, including tomorrow night 
here in Durham, North Carolina, at the Durham Performing Arts Center. We saw over the weekend, Mike, that soccer star Luis Suarez actually bit another player. And next thing you know, you're following him on Twitter as the guy who famously bit Evander Holyfield way back in the day. Uh, tell us how you put those two things together and why'd you follow Luis Suarez? Hey, I just, um, I don't know. I just saw the guy in the Twitter thing. My God, hey, this guy, um, uh, is an interesting guy. And we just followed him and checked him out, see what, what his journey is all about. You know, he said to my, you know, it happens. You know what I mean? I'm sure he made amends with his guy. I made amends with my band, uh, and we're going on with our lives. Mike Tyson joining us on the David Glenn Show. What was more fun, being a part of WrestleMania or having a role in the Hangover movies? Oh, man, both of them are just so awesome. But, you know, I'm a definitely diehard WWE guy. That's just what. It, that's just who I am. I can act a fool and be a child, a real child again, and not get in trouble for it. Not many guys in both the International Boxing Hall of Fame and the WWE Hall of Fame. <laughs> um, I hold that. Listen, um, to be honest and sincere, my right and Allah, I, I have a whole great esteem for that. I'm very proud of that. I know um, maybe proud pride is not a good thing, but I, I, I hold I hold a great deal of esteem and pride for that accomplishment. I know people may say WWE that's phony stuff. It really means a lot to me that I'm in both of them. No fighter's ever done that in the history of the sport. Mike Tyson is joining us. Check out the websites dpacnc.com for tickets to tomorrow night's show or Tyson on Tour. That chronicles the details of Mike's travels all around the country. Ten weeks, 36 cities on Twitter. It's at Mike Tyson and also at Mike Tyson on Tour. Hey, if you run into maybe a 25 year old Mike, you know, people of every generation seem to know something about you. But the older folks remember you first as a boxer. How about the younger folks? Do they remember the boxing or the video game or the movies or something else? No, the video games and the uh, movies. One little kid told his father, hey, Dad, they were my case in the actor. <laughs> had no idea. And then the mother or the father explained to him what I've done when I was younger and who I am and that kind of stuff. You have changed so much, Mike. How do you define success at this stage of your life? I know you say it's not about money anymore. What is it about? I don't know. I think success for me is not being in prison, um, being a, being responsible, being a father to my children, um, being dedicated to my wife, not cheating on her, not bringing those, those venereal disease back home like I did in my previous marriages and relationships. This is what success to me is. This is my success. You know, most people just having the prettiest girl in the world, biggest payday, being rich. You know, um, this is my success, being free, doing nothing life-threatening and freedom-threatening. That's success for me. Mike Tyson joining us on the David Glenn Show. A lot of people will say, Mike, that one of the worst things, maybe the worst thing that could happen to any person is seeing them have a, a young child die. And you went through that. How do you share... Uh, your thoughts about such a tragic issue, your four-year-old daughter dying in a horrible accident. How do you share your thoughts with others who go through tragedies that are similar yourself? Listen, man, um, I don't have no exclusivity to pain. You know, there were other people in there, too, that babies were dying or just died right there with my kids. And um, it was just a bad thing, and we all had to deal with it, and that's just what it was. Do you have to be careful when you talk about Robin Givens on stage? No, I talk about a uh, um, a and freedom and freedom. No limits, no holds barred. All out. <laughs> so uh, so um, emotionally vulnerable up there, but it's going for it. How do you explain either your facial tattoo or your fascination with pigeons to people who don't know you? I do. It's just my tattoo. I decided to do it. The hell with you. You don't like it. Um, this is just who I am. Quick question specific to North Carolina. You have a half-brother, Jimmy Lee Kirkpatrick, who was credited way back in the yeah, day. I'm a Kirkpatrick. I'm, I'm a Kirkpatrick, yeah. There's a crazy story here in North Carolina that, that I didn't even know about until I was looking into your background before you were joining us on the show. He is actually credited, Jimmy yeah. Lee Kirkpatrick, with helping integrate high school football here in North Carolina way back around the same time you were being born. Did you even know that your brother was involved in such a good cause way back in the mid-60s? I didn't know, but I knew he was a, um, I, I believe he, he was in Portland now. 
He helped integrate. Uh, me. He actually helped integrate sports here in North Carolina back in the 1960s when he lived in the Charlotte area. I was not aware of that, you know. And it's going to be interesting, probably meeting some Kirkpatrick's when I'm down there. That's right. Mike Tyson coming to Durham, North Carolina tomorrow night. Again, Mike Tyson on tour on Twitter. The website TysonOnTour.com if you want tickets to tomorrow night's show. DPACNC.com. How did Spike Lee help your show? Well, you know, he, when I first had this show, you know, of course it was, um, I'm really, at, um, I don't know, I'm a little gaudy and stuff, so I had a rock band, all right? I got a rock band, I got a female vocalist, I got a piano player. And it's me up there, and we're going. It's like lights, cameras, action. This is Hollywood, Broadway, Las Vegas at its finest. It was too much for Spike. That's a little bit too much excitement for him. So he took all that away. As far as I can tell, Mike, most of the reviews of your show through these last couple months have been positive. Not all of them, of course, but most of them. Who do you care about most when it comes to people offering their opinions of you on stage? Um, My peers. my, uh, my Jeff Ross. And some of the other comedians, they had came to me and um, they said, hey, you're one of us. And I never looked at myself as a comedian because I always took myself in front of me. I'm the biggest champ. Well, he'll make fun of me. But um, this is what I am. And um, he welcomed me in the fraternity, and I'm very grateful. And um, this is just what it is. As we let you go, Mike Tyson joining us on the David Glenn Show. I read that you described your feeling on stage as if you were an actor portraying Mike Tyson rather than being Mike Tyson himself. What did you mean by that? I don't know. It's even hard being Mike Tyson because um, if I was Mike, if I was really doing it from my from the gut and I wasn't scripted, it was no way. The show wouldn't last five minutes. I'd start feeling sorry for myself and make stuff crying, make it mad at people in the audience, but I wouldn't be strong emotionally. But um, just the fact that I do it, I'm very objective about this situation. I um. I don't have no feelings in this situation because I'm being an actor portraying a guy named Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson, TysonOnTour.com, DPACNC.com if you want to see him tomorrow night. Hey, Mike, enjoy your trip here to North Carolina. Have fun on stage tomorrow night at DPAC. That's right. I'm ready to be there. Thank you, brother. Appreciate the time on the David Glenn Show. Mike Tyson, the youngest heavyweight champion in the history of the world.